Hello guys, welcome to All Electronics. Today I have a quick video here explaining for you this project I'm working on. I'm posting a lot about this and now I have a full explanation here, okay? So I'm designing, what I'm really designing is a power meter, a diode detector power meter. We have here the new version of the head, okay? And you're measuring the power at 2.1 gigahertz uh, minus 7.6, negative 7.6 dBm of power, and we can read here in the screen the measure, negative 7.6, let's change here, let's go to 14 points, let's go, okay, 15.1, and you have here 15.1, this is not fake news, this really works, guys. Look at this, look at the accuracy of this. I'm really impressed by, by the accuracy. But okay, how it works, guys? Um, we have in the head, this is the, the heart of the project. We have a zero bias diode detector there. That schematic there, okay? We have a um, series diode that is rectifying the power at the input. We are terminating the radio frequency power in a fifth ohm load here to 100 ohm resistors. We are rectifying it, not really rectifying because we are working with the diode on the small signal region. So we have this modulation of the resistance of the junction, okay? And this modulation will create a DC uh, imbalance and we are going to uh, have a DC potential here at the uh, other side of the dial here. So we can read this DC potential, uh, potential and it is proportional to the input power, okay? So for very uh, 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 low uh, powers, we have uh, a direct relation. The voltage is proportional to the dBm power to the power in, in the log uh, scale. And when we start to enter in the large signal behavior of the diode where we, where we really start to, to act as a, a rectifier, we start to get the, uh, 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 the normal uh, relation of a diode where the voltage have the square root relation because now we are really rectifying the voltage of the load here, okay? But this doesn't matter because for us, because to get this, oh my God. Okay, to get this kind of accuracy here, we need a calibration. So uh, the, the transducer response here, uh, the perfect tra transducer response actually doesn't matter, okay? This, so the head here, the head has uh, uh, more secrets that I will explain later, okay? But that is the heart of the circuit. This DC power voltage, this DC signal is coupled to the front end. And here we have the prototype of the front end, okay, guys? The, let me take here the pen so I can explain for you, okay? What do you have here? Let's see. We have uh, an analog switch that I'm using to change the gain of the uh, uh, front end amplifier. So we can switch the gain with an analog switch. We can also make the auto zero of the front end because we are reading very, very small signals, okay? In the uh, 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 lower range, we have um, 300, 400 microvolts. So we need to have a auto zero function on the front end and it is performed by the Arduino and the analog circuit. And for this, I'm using the analog switch. We have an operational amplifier here, an op amp that is doing the gain, the active gain to amplify the small voltage, okay. And we also have, and okay, this analog signal goes to the uh, AD converter of the Arduino and we convert it, apply a calibration curve, a polynomial uh, regression on the calibration uh, data. I will show it later. And we can arrive at the measured power correctly, okay? But this is not so easy because we need to compensate for temperature because the uh, 
transducer response is very uh, sensitive to the temperature. So my solution, my start solution, I began this project trying to compensate in software measuring the temperature of the junction. And the calibration curve would be very hard to fit with a regression, a low order regression, and it would never work, okay guys? So I changed my approach here and now I'm using a heater. So here, side to side with the diode, let me get the another pen here so I can draw here, okay? We have a second uh, diode, in the same package, so we have, let's draw here, let me get this zoom out, okay. We have other diode, place it in opposite direction, and these two diodes are in the same package, okay. So we can use the second diode to measure the temperature of the detector diode, right, and I place it a resistor. Okay, near these two diodes, actually the resistor is soldered here. Okay, so we have thermal connection of the heat of the resistor to the package of the diodes. So applying DC power, okay, to this diode, to this resistor, actually, we can heat the package controlling the temperature. And if we read the voltage of this junction here, we can actually close the loop with the microcontroller to um, get a very stable temperature at the junction. And this is what I'm really doing here. So if I touch this, it is uh, warm, okay? It's warm to the touch because I'm really heating it to 45 degrees. And how I'm doing this? Let's get here the pan and I will show the circuit here. We have, first, a current source that is providing constant current to the measuring junction. It's important to provide a constant current to the measuring junction, so its voltage temperature coefficient is constant and known. So with a constant current, we can read the voltage of that sensing junction to, know, to close the loop knowing the temperature of the package, okay? This is important. The voltage read goes to a differential amplifier and it, and it is amplified and go to other channel of the AD of the Arduino, okay? And here we have a small buck converter controlled by a PWM of the Arduino that is providing a DC, the DC power the variable DC power to the junction resistor that I solder that, the heater resistor, that is soldered to the pin of the diode so it can heat the junction. And this is how it works, guys. Let me log in here again, okay. Here I have a small pro uh, program right at in that I wrote in JavaScript that reads the signal converted from the AD of the Arduino and display the power here after a calibration curve. So I'm using a polynomial for, for the order regression to fit a calibration curve to the voltage provided by the detection, di uh, to the detection diode there, junction there. So, what really happens, guys, I you draw it here, is that we have the detector. Let's see here. We have the detector. And the detector is providing uh, a voltage that in a log-to-log -log, uh, plot here, has this kind of uh, uh, shape here. So this is the diode junction voltage, okay? There, the voltage after the detection. And here we have 
Oh, sorry, guys. Here is the DBM power. DBM power. And here is the detected voltage. Now it's better. Okay. So, this is in log. Okay. This is the curve. So, we can convert the DBM to the voltage reading of the Arduino to a DBM power. And I fitted a polynomial of order order here. So I got some points here, spaced 5 dBm apart, and I fitted a polynomial regression here. So this has an equation, so the polynomial converting voltage to dBm has an equation, characteristic equation um, of d times x squared plus c times x third plus b times x uh, the sec uh, squared plus... A, yeah, this is the equation. So using the equation, the coefficients of this polynomial, we can get a very precise and accurate reading of the power. There, we can see 16.1 there and 16.1 here. Guys, this is, I'm, I'm really ha happy. And it, uh, and it is also frequency dependent. So uh, you get one polynomial for each frequency Space at 100 megahertz apart, and we can interpolate after. So you see that if I change here the frequency, we get a small variation in the dBm power. It's not so big the variation, but we have a we have a variation here. We can see there. Okay, but using maybe 10, 15 polynomials spaced in frequency, you can we we can interpolate linearly between the polynomials to get the correct power reading. And this is an, an overview of the circuit. This is not the final version. Uh, I will publish the final version when I got it working. But you can see the amplifier, guys. The front end amplifier. We have the signal coming coming from the um, the head here. We have the switch uh, uh, matrix here to make the auto zero. A switching matrix here to make the, the to change the gain. We are working in three. Three different gains here. We have a, a gain of one, one hundred, and five hundred. We have also a small system here using a PWM deck of the Arduino to make an offset compensation of the op amp. So when the Arduino boots, it makes an offset compensation to compensate to compensate the voltage offset of the op amp. And here we can see the signal. And okay, and the output signal here go to goes to the AD, and here is the system for the temperature uh, uh, regulation. We have the constant current for the diode junction. This constant current goes to the second secondary diode junction, the red diode there, and we are reading the differentially the voltage across that junction. Okay, using a differential uh, amplifier here. And the voltage goes to the AD and the AD and the Arduino reading this AD uh, 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 voltage here can control other PWM channel, not that one, a second PWM channel of this small buck converter here to control the resistor. And I will log in again here, guys. Uh, okay, so we can see that probably this 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 project will be very useful, guys, for us because we can make a very actually a very precise measuring device using very low uh, 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 very no no expensive parts, and I'm doing my my. My work here, I draw uh, the final schematics and maybe we can make an enclosure for this with an, an LCD screen. And in the next video, I'll try to present for you the final project working, okay? And you can see, it never gets bored. I never get bored to, to play with this. 38, negative 38.3, we have here negative 38.5, okay? 
Still very accurate. Uh, let's go here. Negative 37. Negative 37.2. So... Um, I you are you finish my work here guys and when I got I got the final schematics I will, I will make a video for you okay thank you for watching and I see you in the next video